This video will help us to review writing explicit equations for simpler quadratic functions. By simpler quadratic functions, I'm speaking of the form where you have some type of x squared plus a constant. These ones will not have a middle x value. We'll review how to do those in a later video. For now, we'll begin by finding the first and second differences. We'll do that by extending the table to the right-hand side. The first new column will label the first difference. The second new column will label the second difference. We won't have values here. To go from negative 1 to negative 11, you need to subtract 10. To go from negative 11 to negative 25, you're going to subtract 14. To go from negative 25 to negative 43, you'll be subtracting 18. And to go from negative 43 to negative 65, you'll be subtracting 22. To find the second differences, we'll look at the differences between the first. To go from negative 10 to negative 14, you're subtracting 4. To go from negative 14 to negative 18, you're also subtracting 4. And again here. We'll look at the second differences. The coefficient of the x squared, that is the number in front of the x squared, is always half of the second difference. In this case, half of negative 4 is negative 2. This tells me that my function will take the form of f of x equals negative 2x squared. However, if I try substituting any of the numbers for x, I'll see that my equation right now does not work. For instance, if we substitute 2 in, we will not get negative 1. 2 squared is 4, times negative 2 is negative 8. I need to add something at the end. If I think about it, a negative 8 plus 7 would give me negative 1. I'm not sure this equation is right, though. I need to check it in a few more numbers. For instance, if we now take the 3, we need to make sure that the equation generates a result of negative 11. Let's try it. 3 squared is 9. 9 times negative 2 is negative 18. Negative 18 plus 7 is negative 11. The equation works. If you want to be really sure, try it on one more number in your head. 4 squared is 16. 16 times negative 2 is negative 32. Negative 32 plus 7 is negative 25. My function works. Let's look at another example. Let's try this one. We'll go ahead and again extend the table to the right hand side to do the first and second differences. Again, there won't be any values here because we don't have a term above 1 right now. To go from 1 to negative 4, you're subtracting 5. To go from negative 4 to 1, you're adding 5. From 1 to 16, you're adding 15. And then lastly, 16 to 41, you're adding 25. For the second differences, negative 5 to positive 5, you need to add 10. And again, and again. Looking at the second differences, I can see what my coefficient of the x squared will be. Half of 10 is 5, so I know this equation will take the form f of x equals 5x squared. Let's see if it works. If we substitute in negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1, times 5 is 5. It doesn't quite work. Negative 1 should generate a 1. I need to correct it. I know that 5 minus 4 would give me 1. Let's try it in a couple more values. If, for instance, we plug in a positive 1, 1 squared is 1, times 5 is 5, and then minus the 4 gives me a result of 1. Or if I plug it in, the x is 2. For f of 2, 2 squared is 4, times 5 is 20, and minus the 4 gives me 16. There's actually an easier way to find the constant. If you're given the x value is 0, right here, the negative 4, which is the f of 0, tells me 
what the constant will be for the quadratic function. If you're given this, it's much easier just to take half the second difference, find your x squared value. Then look where x is 0 to find your constant. Again, this only works if you have something in the form of ax squared plus c. No middle term. I hope this helps you, and thank you for watching.